I would say old growth project is uh, kind of like a, a space of discovery. The exhibition is kind of like a space of discovery where it's an open archive that contains reproductions of um, hundreds of pages of his uh, work that ranges from the uh, 1970s all the way to the early 2000s and uh, they um, kind of create a visual arc um, in terms of uh, not only the content, but also um, the creative experimentation. He, for my part, I had to, uh, not that I was looking for, for somebody, but had to feel comfortable with you uh, personally and as a professional in order to sort of say, here are boxes of materials that I have selected over the last 40 years, uh, and please enjoy, yeah. open it up, look through it. Yeah. I mean, who knows what sort of things one can find in the box that we've been saving for four years, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so there was a, a real basis of trust that was really yeah. important in terms of the actual selection of the work in the show. That is your, yeah. that, that's where the, it moves from studio yeah. through your hands into, into gallery space. And I don't think that process, like my process of selecting specific pieces was uh, structured in any particular way. It was much more um, intuitive and it was, um, I mean I had some sense of certain things that I felt were important to include. Um, for instance, the, uh, the culturally modified trees uh, drawing series that was uh, important to include and also um, um, you know the drawings of tree stems and I saw recurring motifs as I was going through um, numerous, probably it went through a couple thousand drawings, um, and there were certain patterns that emerged out of it, and um, I wanted to kind of uh, retain that sen sense of uh, repetition. The political work that is, is in the exhibit in Old Growth is of a different time, and, uh, and the audience for that work was ourselves. We were talking to ourselves in a very intimate way ourselves in, in, in the community on the island. We weren't, we weren't talking to the Lower Mainland and we weren't particularly interested in having that, that conversation uh, in part because there was no vehicle easily available for us to, to sort of express who we were as, as indigenous peoples. And um, so it, w it was somehow easy to put to put the complex political message in a little box because I could I could use shortcuts. I could use code in, in terms of our dialect. What's important is to remember that um, uh, the materials in old growth, um, they have had very specific audiences for whatever you created, but it's also evident in the way it is drawn um, that uh, certain kinds of uh, audiences interpolated. So, um, for instance, the earlier work, it, it's directed more towards your community, um, where people understand certain issues. So it takes a certain look, whereas in the later work, um, you have a different sensibility in terms of how you want to visually create uh, the narratives. Unfortunately, those issues remain. Mm -hmm. I mean, even though we're talking about work yeah. that is decades old yeah. from the dusty archives, we are still wrestling with this dangerous idea of, of taking uh, oil tankers and allowing them to sort of weave their way through some of the most uh, high energy coastlines of the world. And, and so those are the issues we're dealing with in the, in the 70s, in the 80s, in the 90s, and I have to say that every time that issue has come up, uh, it, has, it has been defeated. This is not the first time this proposal has come up and it's been defeated and then, and I hope it's defeated again. Unfortunately, it's still here. In terms of the, of the content of the current work, is it is less about honing in on a on a on a, a very sort of political issue, an oil tanker issue, or whatever. But it's more about that relationship between self and, and other, that which we see ourselves out, that, that that which we see outside of ourselves. It's the same issue, but it's more personalized because the audience is, is slightly different. That borderline, it's that sharp edge, it's that comic book panel, and how do we describe time and space between different elements of the narrative we're exploring. And in one way, the classic comic book is that hard edge, 
very sort of crisp rectangular uh, urban uh, planners layout um, uh, which has got the great white space in between as if everything outside of our story goes in. So, so that's why I use the form line which is a, a high uh, uh, construct um, and I've, I've used that uh, undulating bigness and smallness and it's sort of stretching out of, of um, giving space form and dimension and, and allowing it not only to describe our little narrative which is contained within it but, but also to allow time and space to have its own narrative. It expands and it contracts and it has a relationship, sometimes dominant, sometimes lesser than. The relationship between the narrative that's contained and, and the form line that is the container uh, changes. Um, neither one drives the other. They require each other to exist. Like you're saying, Liz, we have created time and space. Uh, as a uh, you know as, as a as a practical tool to to help us navigate this experience and and sometimes it's big and, and drives the story a, a little bit and sometimes we're big and we drive the story a little bit but the, the two need to uh, commingle they need to, to have this uh, dance this uh, push pull relationship i very very seldom have a uh, script that i'm working with there are examples where i do such as red a Haida manga. It's, it's 108 pages and this is a very complex piece and I had to, uh, to, to work with the script because it's based on, a, on an oral narrative. But for a, a standalone piece, a, a much smaller piece, I'll just start doing the work. I'll just start, I'll get that brush slopping across the paper and just see what comes out of it. And it, and it seems that what's really uh, enjoyable is when I find that, that initial moment when I can uh, get all the clutter and chatter out of my mind. And it's, it, there's a little visual image that goes with that, and that, that is of a large brush. Imagine it, you know, circumference in the barrel, or something like this, and with the bristles at the end, but it's empty. And, 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 and when I can sort of find myself as an empty brush, and no, nothing in, in there, it allows the ink to come in. It allows something to come in and flow out the end of the bristles, and then, and then, and then, then my mind starts kicking and saying, "Oh, that's kind of neat. Turn this, this the other way, upside down, backwards, and whatever." And things start coming out, and then narrative does start to come out. And it's interesting that what I'm doing is once the narrative starts uh, appearing, the conscious narrative on on the page, I will often do something to completely remove it, turn it turn it around. It's called a rotation. I call it a rotational series. And, and so I'm always tricking myself. Ah, oh, you're getting yourself in there. Let's do that. And what I'm hoping happens at the other end is that the observer sees the work. Let's say it's a piece of work hanging on the wall. And there is little to indicate where the proper horizon is. There is a, a minimal reference to the authority of the artist. To any authority for that matter, I guess, is what I'm really trying to get to. I want to get to a place, I get to a place where people decide, I think I like that, like this, or like that. And welcoming people, individuals, to take control of themselves, to question it, and, and not to be looking at a painting and say, ah, the painter has signed his name at the lower right-hand corner, therefore, this is up, this is down. And I, I, I signed <coughs> all the corners, actually. I, initial here and you know, I'll flip it and I'll, I'll put my little archiving number on it now I'll, I'll put a title there and then I might put another little thing there and it's really to have people understand that when you switch the the laws of gravity around it is not the loss of everything it is the discovery of something in its own way there is no diminishment of us as humans it just gives us a whole another wonderful way to discover the world Chief Skidigit, uh, Lanas Al Skidigit, and his son uh, and a couple other friends, we would go and take these Japanese students out and leave them in the forest for hours on end. So they had these very sort of personal experiences. Uh, and it was during these conversations that would take place over these trips, which would last a week or so, that I heard about Mangaka, as was a comic book artist, which was a, a 
a respect, respected profession, and that wasn't the case here at that time. My work in terms of the, uh, the look of manga is not manga. It, it, it's truer to what I understand the definition of manga, which is art without borders. Manga is less an effort, there is no effort to try to replicate a Japanese technique, but it is a, an appreciation. The marriage of Haida and Manga uh, helped me position, locate it uh, for myself. Being blatantly self-serving in the first instance uh, has created these um, uh, uh, circumstances that have been encouraged by, by, by audiences, I mean, by gallery goers, by collectors of art. And there seems to be something about get the chatter out of the way and do, do this little thing that I'm doing here. And uh, if it's true, and it feels true for me, it, it's going to work. The starting point for a relationship to that which is around us is not so hard-edged. It is not such an imposition. And it really is more of an integration and, and a flexibility. In sort of translating that into art, well, that's, uh, that's something that I feel that I've always got always sort of scribbled and played around with. Fortunately for me, when I became older, unlike uh, most children, uh, I didn't lose that that uh, creative expression. I didn't channel it off or deny it. I just kept playing with it. And I think that comes from, uh, from, from within a community that, that really does value the creation of, 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 of objects. So that people woke up and saw, there's a whole audience and a whole set of, of questions, important questions and, and themes that are not being addressed in comic books. And so let's, let's open it up. Let's talk graphic literature. Uh, let's, 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 uh, Let's really look at it and, and see it as a very complex uh, uh, art, art, art form. We need to be honest about who we are in terms of relationship to that which is around us.